Periods don't stop during a pandemic, nor does the need to look after your mental health. We heard from young people in the northern metropolitan region of Melbourne that COVID-19 has made it more difficult to manage their menstrual health and mental health, especially for those who lived experience of endometriosis, polycystic ovary syndrome, and premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Pads, tampons, and menstrual cups have become more expensive due to increased demand and a shortage in supply. It has been more difficult to access public toilet facilities to change and dispose of menstrual products in a timely and private way. While adopting to telehealth appointments has made it easier for some young people to access healthcare, for others it has been a barrier to diagnosis and management of their menstrual health and mental health. Take Riley for example. In the lead up to their periods, their mental health wasn't too good. Have you not been hit by the GP at the first telehealth appointment? Riley sought a second opinion. Riley was diagnosed with premenstrual dysphoric disorder, a more severe type of PMS that causes psychological distress and socioeconomic dysfunction. It wasn't just a bad period, and they weren't just stressed. The restrictions associated with COVID-19 made it harder for Riley to access timely and affordable health care that supported both the mental health and menstrual health. Riley was not alone in their experience. We heard from other young people that they struggled to access the health care they needed, including a colonoscopy to investigate the presence of endometriosis, additional mental health sessions covered by Medicare, or simply accessing a GP who would believe their lived experiences when they reported pain or distress. How can you help support young people manage their menstrual health and mental health? Ask questions, listen to their lived experiences. Instead of looking at just menstrual health or just mental health, consider them together and consider how they interact with one another. Consider additional barriers that young people might face. Is your service culturally safe? Is your service accessible? Is your service LGBTQIA plus friendly? Do you have interpreter services available? Only when we provide a holistic, person-centred approach to healthcare and stronger connections between our GPs and mental health professionals can we promote good health outcomes for young people. Mental health and menstrual health are connected and we must consider them together and how they interact so that young people can receive the best support.